Hello, it's Scott Manley here. Followers of the NASA-led program to return humans to the surface of the moon had a surprise a couple of weeks ago when Doug Lavaro, the new head of human spaceflight at NASA, mentioned a critical change to the Artemis program plan. The Lunar Gateway was no longer being planned for the 2024 target, citing too many unknowns and risks, primarily in the high-power Hall Effect thrusters in the power and propulsion element. Now, to be clear, the Lunar Gateway is still an international program, so it's, it's still official planned and still on schedules, it's just no longer required for the 2024 landing date. The Lunar Gateway has been in plans for a long time. It's argued that it's an ideal place to stage missions to the lunar surface and to Mars, where a spacecraft could be built in a lunar orbit, fueled with lunar sources, and then swing by the Moon and the Earth on its way to Mars. It would be a small space station, but not, not with a permanent crew, although a permanent crew, crew wouldn't be ruled out in future expansions. It would be in a near rectilinear halo orbit above the Moon, which is a loosely bound uh, orbit to the Moon in a highly eccentric orbit that's balanced between the Earth and the Moon's gravity field. From the Moon's point of view, it's uh, in a seven-day orbit over the poles. The orbit goes from about 70,000 kilometers out to about 2,000 kilometers. But because it's also an orbit around the Moon, eh, sorry, the Earth, the plane of the orbit see appears to twist so that it's always aligned with the Earth. This orbit was chosen out of many because it keeps the gateway visible to the Earth and the Sun, enabling constant power and communications. It doesn't spend much time near the Moon, which reduces the heating it experiences from the moonlight. And the station keeping is, for this orbit is also quite minimal, it's less than 10 meters per second per year. And because it's loosely bound to the Moon, getting to this orbit requires relatively low delta V compared to other candidates. For comparison, the Apollo spacecraft went directly into a low lunar orbit and landed from there. Artemis is not going to do that. In fact, the Orion spacecraft with its small service module just doesn't have the Delta V capabilities to get into a low lunar orbit from its transfer orbit. So it's intended to actually meet a multi-stage lander at the Gateway. The Gateway was originally supposed to be launched on SLS with Orion. It was going to be a second co-manifested payload using the bigger SLS Block 1B. That is where the second stage is upgraded. SLS Block 1, which we're getting ready to test next year, uses the ICPS, the Interim Cryogenic Propulsion Stage, which is more or less the upper stage of the Delta IV Heavy. Block 1B is supposed to use the Exploration Upper Stage, a much larger stage which uses four RL-10 engines. But while Boeing has been given hundreds of millions of dollars to work on it, they haven't finished designing it. And it was close to being cancelled outright by the White House budget request. There was another design review that was completed late last year. So anyway, the EUS are, is out of contention and with the SLS launches looking to be very expensive, Artemis proposal uh, allowed for Gateway and the lander components to be launched by much cheaper commercial launch vehicles instead. So until a few weeks ago, our, the Artemis program we'd imagined had a lot of commercial launch vehicles. Falcon 9, Vulcan, possibly even New Glenn, carrying components to the Gateway orbit and assembling a lander there for astronauts to use in 2024. As of right now, NASA has awarded contracts for gateway components. Maxar is building the power and propulsion element, which is based on one of their large satellite buses with a large solar array and high power Hall effect thrusters and large tanks of xenon. The minimal habitation module is being built by Northrop Grumman, and that's based on their Cygnus cargo spacecraft with additional docking hardware and thermal control modules. This will be the hub of the station. By 2024, enough hardware would in, be in place and SLS would then carry a crew to the gateway where they would then board the lander and depart for the lunar surface. Now it seems that in the name of speed, this plan is being abandoned. The 2024 date appears to be the strongest factor. Too many launches, too much risk, too many things that can go wrong. To be clear, you might remember NASA had originally pitched this landing on the moon using the Gateway in 2028, in part because it was expecting a lot of SLS launches to be needed. So what is the plan? 
Well, I suspect that Boeing's proposal for a lander launched on top of an SLS Block 1B looks like the obvious candidate, minimizing the launches and probably making a lot of politicians happy. I've seen a lot of strategic lobbying against the gateway and for more money being sent to Boeing to scale up its SLS capability. And yes, even the House spending bill that showed politicians from both sides of the aisle were quite happy to hand more of Artemis over to Boeing. I'd love to tell you all about this design, but all we have is a few pictures and not very much concrete information. Beyond the exploration upper stage still not being settled on, the other problem we have with this would be that it would require two SLS launches as close to each other as possible, and Boeing is maybe able to build one SLS booster per year. And even then, if it did have two ready to go, it doesn't have the facilities to stack and launch two rockets at a time, so there would be months between these launches. We do know that Boeing's proposal for the human landing system is intended to use engines from intuitive machines. Those run on LOX and methane, so unlike other proposals which have suggested hydrogen and oxygen, this uh, might help because you know, storing hydrogen for long periods in space is not a solved problem by any means whereas storing cryogenic methane and oxygen is possibly a little more amenable to uh, being solved. Look, the Gateway has never been the most popular program and it has many detractors. You know, for example, Robert Zubrin considers it unnecessary and calls it the lunar toll booth because it adds extra delta V to both Mars and lunar trajectories. I can see that anyone rushing a program to get people to the surface of the moon by 2024 would see it as a potential obstacle since so much has to work. But the international partners also give it some resilience to political disinterest and it's entirely possible that the Gateway doesn't make it to space in its current vision but in some transformed version. The problem I have with switching away from it to hit an arbitrary launch or landing date, it leads us down the path of another program which is focused on getting there and delivering flags and footprints and not much else. It spends a lot of money and time and effort inefficiency, inefficiently and leaves Artemis lagging behind where it could be with good long-term planning and looks to the, you know, views of the future. The gateway is surely a compromise between a number of requirements and it doesn't make everyone happy, but the same can be said of a lot of big successful space projects. The Artemis design with multiple companies building, launching hardware and working together in space is a much more sustainable design and it's what we should ultimately be aiming for in a future cis-lunar economy. Of course, I say all this in the middle of the rather more terrestrial economy crashing because workers are having to stay home to avoid even worse consequences. The political reality might be that Artemis simply doesn't represent the kind of economical stimulus that politicians are wanting to support right now. We won't know how the coronavirus affects Artemis for a long time. So we'll see how this plays out. But until then, I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe. And of course, I mean keep a safe distance from others. Thank <laughs> you.